I'm Namakam Kelabai. Welcome to IDC Insights. This is a program that profiles the Industrial Development Corporation's investments and subsidiaries in the group. Now, today's program is special because we profile another IDC greenfield project, and that is Infratel. Infratel is Zambia's largest ICT infrastructure company. In the program today, IDC's Charles Chulu talks to Infratel management about the company. Welcome to Zambia's leading telecommunications and ICT infrastructure company. Welcome to Infratel. Improvement of information flow through the investment and upgrading of telecommunication networks and data centers is at the core of Zambia's industrialization agenda as the country seeks to modernize. To realize this dream, the IDC has embarked on a digital transformation journey by leveraging available agile and flexible IT platforms and hardware. In this regard, the IDC set up and incorporated Infratel in 2018 to consolidate, own and manage shareable ICT and telecommunications infrastructure. Infratel was born like a shark, swimming. You know, we, we just thrown in the market. There are others who are there, and uh, you have to challenge for what is in the market. And uh, we have done quite a lot from the time that we went into operations to where we are today. When you are setting up an entity like Infratel, going in a market which is already having so many providers, sometimes your assumptions can actually go very wrong. But I want to confirm that most of our assumptions we are right. We started operations. We are now stronger than we were at the beginning of 2020. Just one year. And I want to say we have actually beat almost all the targets that uh, you know, we were given up to where we are. So we are very happy. As a new player on the market, Enfratel leverages its wide portfolio of service spanning across towers, data centers, and optic fiber transformation. This enables the company not only to offer competitive services, but it also makes it a one-stop shop and a preferred provider of telecom and ICT infrastructure services. We have two business lines, and um, this is the data center business line and the tower uh, no, business line. On the data center business line, we are providing services such as co-location where the customer brings in equipment and places it in our environment so that they can benefit from the cooling, the security and the power availability that we have already invested in. We also have virtual machines. These are just servers, but uh, they are provided virtually over our, our cloud platform. We also have email as a service, storage. We also have physical servers. Some customers, they come to us and they tell us, we don't want to use your actual servers. We don't want to use your virtual servers. We want to use physical servers so that we are separated physically from everyone else who is actually accessing service from them. We have these available and customers like from the financial sectors, they want to actually leverage that infrastructure. That is on the data center side. Uh, on the tower side, we have co-location. This very similar to what happens in the data centers, but this time around the co-location happens at the tower sites, the telecom tower sites. So customers, they bring their equipment and they use the space on the ground and space on the tower, and they pay just a small fee to access that space and operate from that environment. And we provide the security and other janitorial services to make sure that they are operating from a good environment. The customers who usually take up such service at the tower sites are the mobile network operators, the TV and radio stations, we have a couple of them who are accessing that service, the ISPs, they also access that service. And primarily when they get these services, it's for the purpose of broadcasting within that area the signal so that the customers who are in that catchment 
are able to access their services, but the infrastructure is provided by Infratech. What is a data center and why is it important in this business? Uh, thank you so much, Charles. A data center is nothing but a physical environment uh, that you are seeing out, uh, beyond here. And this data center is purpose built. It's not just like any other facility. It comes with different attributes that differentiates it. The data center has to come with reliant power capabilities. This data center is equipped with power resilience that can take it up to six days without uh, having feed from Zesco. This data center, it has highly technological environmental monitoring uh, systems to ensure that temperature, relative humidity, all those are monitored. As you have seen, high physical security. A data center, yes, it's a physical environment that keeps data, and this, this data comes from different uh, transactions that we do every day. Today we're talking of smart agriculture, data is produced from there. We're talking of smart education, data is produced from there. We're talking of um, uh, us using social media, data is produced from there. That data is stored, it's transmitted, it's archived at a place called a data center. Hence, to business, a data center is basically the nerve center of the digital economy. You will not run systems without having an available and secure environment like the Infratel data centers. So hence, this is not just a facility, it's differentiated because of the many attributes that it has. And beyond that, we are here to ensure that as Infratel, we pass on lower capex to our customers so that our customers do not invest into the many attributes that I've spoken about, power, cooling, and also security. All those factors, we take them up here at the data center and offer to our customers as a managed service. What does it take for a company such as Infratel to put in place such infrastructure for the people of Zambia to benefit from telecom? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, it does take quite a lot. Uh, there's a lot of planning and uh, as you can see a lot of investment that goes in building such infrastructure. Uh, and for Infratel, uh, the main problem we are trying to cure uh, is to ensure that our customers focus on their core business. Uh, you know, so we set up such expensive infrastructure and hope uh, that will get as many tenants to sit on, the, on this infrastructure. And as we get more tenants, we make the service more, more affordable for the customers. And also, it makes it easier for them to expand to areas where they, uh, you know, they don't have coverage, uh, because then they don't have to uh, huge, huge capex uh, from the beginning. They will find infrastructure already, already set up. There is a tower structure, uh, there are power solutions, uh, security is provided, uh, everything is fenced off, you know, uh, and they can only come there and put their associated equipment to provide service. So we enable service for uh, our customers uh, for them to now come and operate. With the ability to utilize renewable energy and guaranteed online security, Enfratel has in less than three years asserted itself as a go-to company because of its innovation and ICT infrastructure services that can be set up wherever there is need for growth and satisfaction. As Infratel, we're trying to operate the most green uh, network in the country. Uh, we'll show you as we go around, you'll be able to see that we've got the solar power plant that we're using on this particular site, which in fact is used at more than three quarters of our 1,260 1, towers that we have. Uh, and uh, the benefits are actually threefold. Uh, one of the benefits is that we cut out capex for our customers. Our, our customers have put a quick turnaround. Uh, they can easily set up, they can easily expand to areas where they are not. Uh, the second benefit is that when they decide to relocate, then the loss to them is not that much. They can just move their service enabling equipment and move it uh, to probably one of our other towers uh, where they can now set up and you know, quickly start offering service. Uh, so the benefits are quite a lot. Customers are able to set up in a short time. Uh, the entry to uh, a particular area where they are not, uh, uh, the barrier is uh, reduced. 
uh, that CAPEX uh, headache that they had is taken away. They will find infrastructure ready for them uh, with power solutions that are more than adequate. Uh, you look at this power plant that we have here. Uh, apart from the grid, we've taken a step further uh, and connected uh, a solar plant which is more than sufficient. So most of the time we are using the solar plant. So the solar plant that you are seeing here, uh, it actually takes a, lo a lot of investment. It's one of the most expensive uh, power solution that we have. However, the benefit is that uh, when we have a solar plant like this, uh, our running costs are more manageable. Uh, it, it means we, we, we depend less on the grid supply. So we, we, in, in certain cases, we have no one to pay electricity bills to because we are generating our own electricity. Uh, and in the cases where maybe the solar plant isn't sufficient, uh, obviously then it means we may have to run on grid for, for a, a reasonably short time. And in some cases, maybe we may have to run a generator for a short time. And our intention obviously is to uh, keep our running costs very low. If we can manage to find uh, the investment in a, a, a robust power plant, uh, we'll go for that option. And that's what we've tried to do. Uh, over the top of all this is that we are trying to be uh, responsive uh, to the environment that we live in. And we are trying to run a green uh, network, uh, you know, uh, uh, cognizant of the fact that we need to uh, take care of our environment. Uh, by operating a solar plant like this, we have no, it's zero emissions uh, to the environment. And also the maintenance that you actually mentioned is quite less. We have very little maintenance. Uh, the solar plant works on its own. The, the only maintenance we're going to do is cleaning the solar panels and you only need water uh, and that's it. Because of its guaranteed local data protection, privacy and security, Infratel gives its customers a peace of mind to allow them to focus on their core businesses rather than worrying about the safety of their database and loss of information. For a business to set up today, it needs to invest into ICT equipment. We've taken away that headache from small uh, scale businesses. We are here to accelerate them. We are also here to reduce on the, to actually reduce on the ease of doing business. By having uh, those small businesses come to Infratel, they will quicken the deployment of their services and solutions to the market. That is the go-to market strategy will be shortened. Infratel is also here to support those small and medium enterprises by ensuring that they actually benefit from our professional capability that we have in cybersecurity, in systems management. You know for sure, SMEs come as lean teams. They should not be employing people to look at ICT administration by them leveraging on what we have at Infratel, our cloud services, they will be able to run with a small team and they will be able to focus on their core business of innovating and turning their business around. While as Infratel, who we'll take care of the heavy part of it by ensuring that we keep their systems available 100% and not only available, but ensure that they are secure and accessible. With more than 1,200 towers widely spread across the nation, Infratel's coverage enables mobile network operators to extend their reach with as little capital expenditure as possible, thereby enhancing ICT penetration. This not only creates employment for those carrying out maintenance works on the tower sites, but it also ensures that the rural communities benefit from the ICT value chain. Uh, as Infratel, we've built a robust uh, network operations center uh, which has got uh, a network monitoring system that is integrated to all the sites. So we are able to see faults in real time and respond to them in, in real time. Other than the network operations center, you probably may ask, does Infratel have a thousand employees looking after and responding to these faults? Uh, we, we've gone with the group policy to empower Zambians. And uh, we have uh, what we call managed service partners. So these are small, small companies uh, that we are giving this kind of work of doing the bots and nuts. As Infratel, we've got uh, a limited number of engineers that are supervising uh, these smaller companies that are doing the running about to repair any faults that come up 
you know, to respond to emergencies and do the maintenance of our infrastructure. And by so doing, we are empowering a lot of Zambians uh, and, uh, you know, employing a lot of Zambians uh, without directly getting involved uh, in the day-to-day -day of their uh, uh, HRI issues. Uh, apart from those managing the towers, we also have the security firms. We do not have them under the books of Infratel, but we have also subcontracted that to companies that are trained uh, to be, uh, you know, to run security operations. And by so doing, again, we are empowering a lot of Zambians. Overall, if you look at the impact of uh, the number of people that are benefiting from this infrastructure, it will, it will go to maybe 300, uh, uh, three, over 300 people. Uh, and then if you look at families, you are in the thousands of people impacted by this uh, kind of infrastructure that we are operating. We are set apart. First of all, the certifications that we have speak for us. In this business, like I indicated, it's a trust business. Customers, they need to be comfortable that where they will be operating from, the environment is good. The availability in terms of the power systems, the cooling, and other things that we put in, they must be actually very good for them to have comfort. But what we have done is we don't blow our own tra uh, trumpet. We have invited globally recognized entities to come and certify us. We go through a rigorous process of testing, you know, investigating our way of doing business, looking at the processes and procedures. Are they aligned to the best practices and standards before they can certify us? And I'm happy to tell you that we have three certifications. And one of them is the PCI DSS. This certification is critical for those who are in the financial sector because they need to have comfort that all financial transactions which will be happening at Infratel cannot be compromised. Because we are certified, we have done everything that is required for them to operate in that environment. We have also the tier three uh, certification. This is a certification for availability of the data center. The metric is about 99.9982%, but I must mention that we've been be able to beat this metric and we are 100% available. This certification also is a hallmark of quality because anyone who wants to come and get services, they don't need us to speak, they can just look at the certification and they can do further investigations with the global uh, entity that certified us. They can find out this information from them to, to have the comfort. We didn't end there. We went ahead and got the ISO 2701, which is uh, information security, you know, standard uh, uh, certification. This also just adds on top uh, our processes aligned to the standards and best practices for an entity which is offering these data center services. All those are processes in terms of checking that we have gone through with these global uh, entities and they've given us these certificates. So we guarantee that when you come to our environment, we'll give you the best quality. And what we do normally is to invite the customer Come and do your own due diligence. Check how we do business. And I must say we have at boards, you know, management boards, they come in, executive management, they come in. Because this is a big decision that you have to make. Whether you are going to continue operating from your own small data center in the corner of your office, or you want to move that infrastructure to Infratel. So it's not uh, the head of IT alone who is going to make that decision and the company wants to know if they move to this environment are they going to be operating where you know everything has been put in place for them to have the comfort and focus on their core business. When it comes to access control we have four stages for the data centers where we actually verify, take details and stuff like that and all our you know access you know, those, they are biometric, uh, biometric controlled. You have to actually be guided to be able to access that if you're just doing a tour. And for the various 
uh, professionals who are working within the data centers. It's not that they access every part of the data center. We have also made sure that we actually segregate. Some of them cannot go in certain areas. It's, this is just to make sure we provide that comfort to our customers that look, we have everything in place in terms of security. Uh, being part of uh, the IEDC group uh, gives a lot of leverage to Infratel. Uh, firstly uh, and foremost, it, it's a business and it's, it's, it's to be run as a profitable business. And because of all that, it shows that this is uh, a business that should be trusted. This is a business that different institutions should work with. Also, our capabilities speak for us. As Infratel, being part of the IEDC, we have demonstrated uh, through our capabilities. We've been 100% available. Security, we have made sure that we do not have any breaches in terms of uh, ensuring that um, we meet the needs of our customers. We meet all our SLA targets for our customers and we continually keep innovating. The IDC group has uh, 35 plus companies. That also gives us a market to tap into. And beyond, it also gives us a leverage to be able to offer services into other regions. We've been able to offer services to other countries as well because we are not just seen as Infratel, but we are seen as being part of a bigger group through the Industrial Development Corporation. As Infratel, it's our mandate to continue evolving, to continue you know, identifying areas that are lacking in communication. And, and I can assure you, our numbers are going up. Uh, last year, the number of towers that we had was not what I gave you. And, and, and uh, this will continue increasing. Uh, some of it as a, as a demand from our customers, and some of it as our own planning. Uh, we've got a business development uh, unit that is uh, uh, actively involved in uh, assessing areas where there is potential uh, you know, for building towers, uh, for extending our coverage and that will continue happening. Uh, next time we'll be talking to you, we'll be talking in the 3,000 number of towers. Uh, uh, because, I mean, technology is evolving and we are preparing for what's coming in the next horizon. Uh, so there is, there's a lot of planning that's going on and indeed our numbers will keep increasing uh, to meet the demand that's there uh, from our citizenry. Well, like, like I indicated earlier, on the data center side, there is no entity within the country which has the certifications that we have. For us, those certifications, are, they, they, they give the comfort to the customer that we are not a contemporary by operating in a corner and claiming to do all sorts of things. We have gone through rigorous processes which, at the end, gives us the certifications that we are actually doing these things right. So we, we are set apart on the data center from that aspect. The distribution of our towers within the country cannot, compare, cannot be compared to anyone else who is operating in this market. We have the best distribution. We also are investing in security at our tower sites. Okay? We don't want this MNO brings equipment, tomorrow it's tempered with. No. We are investing heavily in that area and already we are seeing very good results in that aspect. In the next five years, Infratel is poised to maintain the data center leadership role by improving and investing in more data centers and increase its market share for communication towers to 50%. Infratel is committed to ensuring that ICT services reach every Zambian without exception by making ICT infrastructure accessible everywhere. Well, that's our program for today. For more information, please do visit our website, our Facebook page, and also our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.